Hi everybody, Russ from My Hammers 11. Hope you are all well and safe, or safe and well. Um, firstly, thank you um, for your support. I mean, the, the project's only really been live for a week, um, and the response we've had in terms of people wanting to join, obviously we've interviewed lots of people, got lots of people lined up, has been phenomenal. And I appreciate everyone liking and retweeting and sharing all the content as well. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, there's a lot more to come, that's for sure. If you'd like to get involved and like to um, sit down and have some time and chat with me, um, you can reach me at um, DJ Russy B on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, or you can comment on this video, or you can follow the, the My Hammers 11 uh, social media channels, um, Twitter and Instagram at the moment, at My Hammers 11 um, is in one one. And we can get you on the channel. Um, but the purposes of today is not only to thank everyone, but um, we're going to do sort of a little mini series on a Sunday. Um, whether it's something which has come up and cropped up in conversation with people, or maybe has been a request from the, from you know social media, a tweet, or something like that, or maybe it's just popped in my head, is to do something a little bit different on a Sunday. We're going to have a Sunday Fun Day eleven. So looking at hammers 11 which is a little bit of a different um different opinions so they're not necessarily the best but it'll be an interesting theme which we we're going to be applying uh, and i think it's phil whelan's when we was ch chatting to he suggested that would it be great to have a hammers uh, hammer of the year 11 and it would be um but i thought what would be more fun would be um to have an 11 which i'm calling the bridesmaids 11. so those people who were runners up Ham of the years, but never won the uh, the accolade. So always a bridesmaid, never the bride. Um, not a massive amount of people, to be honest. So obviously they were disqualified if they had won the ham of the year and then were run up the following year or subsequent years and vice versa. So um, and also sticking to the same rules, it's only players that I've seen play. So it's from sort of ninety two onwards, and so uh, a few people are not included, but you know it's part and parcel of the formation. So here we go. Hopefully a bit of fun, a little bit different for everyone. Um, in goal, uh, a player that hasn't come up in conversation yet so with people, it's Yushi Askelainen. And I actually does some research as well, so apologies if I keep going back to my notes. <laughs> but Yushi was uh, run up in 2013 to Winston Reid. Um, I could have put Adrian, who was, who was run up twice. But Yushi, I thought, deserves a bit of a, a shout out. He was huge for us um, in that season. And obviously he came from Bolton. Um, and had that had a huge career at Bolton. Yeah, one of the, arguably one of the great Premier League goalkeepers. I'd say he'd always seem to turn it on when he was playing for Bolton at West Ham. Um, but Yusi was great, and, and you know, not the most stylish player. Had his shirt untucked. He was quite long limbed, but he was a great shot stopper. Um, and so I'm putting Yusi between the sticks for this bridesmaids eleven. Left back, um, George McCartney. Um, George was. Uh, Hammer of the Year run-up in 2008 to Rob Green, I believe. Um, and again, very solid left-back. Um, you know, uncompromising. Not necessarily, you know, you wouldn't sort of, not necessarily number one on the team sheet, if, if that makes sense. But solid, reliable. Never really had any, any errors with us. Um, you know, and, and would happily sort of defend that, that back line. So he was a, a solid left-back back in those, that time. So we'll put him on the left. On the right, we're going to go with Trevor Sinclair. He did play right back for us a couple of times and right wing back and stuff. Um, 2000, he was Hammer of the Year runner-up to um, a player. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's called Paolo Di Canio. Um, it's not like he's come up in every conversation we've had, but um, it's a bit of a foregone conclusion that year, if I remember, for Hammer of the Year. Um, but again, Trevor, I'm not going to talk about him anymore because he comes up in conversations um, regularly with, with people we're interviewing. So we'll put him on the, on the right back. Uh, centre backs we'll go with JT James Collins 2012 Hammer of the Year runner up to Mark Noble um, so that was nice Tompkins and Noble as uh, as academy players in the, it's lovely isn't it in terms of thinking about it uh, but again Tompkins was a great servant for the club still gets a nice response when he comes back um, when he plays in the Palace so we'll put Tompkins in and partly in Tompkins um, and we could put we could have put Ian Pearce for example, but now I've decided to go with Slav. Uh, 1997, uh, he was Hammer of the Year runner up to Julian Dix. So two defenders. Um, I wouldn't think that was particularly often that two defenders would be in sort of the top two spots for Hammer of the Year. But um, again, Slav, you know, played for the club, manager of the club as well. So backline of McCartney, 
um, Tompkins, Billich and Sinclair. Midfield, we'll go for, I mean, we could have put Lanzini. We could have put um, Declan Rice, who's the last two seasons has been running up for Hammer of the Year. But I hope that both will eventually be Hammer of the Year, so I'm not including them. I hope. Let's stay at the club. Um, that's my hopes. That's why I haven't included them. Um, but in, in midfield, on the left wing, um, we're going to go with the, the wild man himself, Alessandro Diamanti, who was run up in 2010 to Scott Parker. Um, I don't know if you remember, but Scott won sort of Hammer of the Year three years in a row. Um, and this was the middle year, if I'm, if I'm right. Um, but he was just crazy, wasn't he, Diamanti? So much passion, real sort of archetypal Italian player. Um, and and the fans loved him, and, and so much so that he was quickly established as a fan favourite and uh, said, right, one runner, runner up in, uh, in 2010. Um, on the other wing, we're going to play. Uh, who are we going to play? Harewood. Marlon Harewood, 2006, runner up to um, Danny Gabadon. Again, Harewood. Great servant for the club. Um, where I used to do the, the music, obviously that little corner, that right wing corner, I ended up calling the nickname that Harewood Corner when he was playing because that's where he would do the little turns and beat the man and, and cut in down the wing and, and, and cross it in or, or take it inside and have a shot. Um, lovely guy. Uh, and, and his podcast with, um, with Colton and Chris Skoll and the Footballer's Guide to a Footballer is really good fun. So, you know, they get some really good guests on there. And hopefully I'll try and piggyback and get some on here on the channel as well. But, uh, yeah, great guy here. So we'll put him on the right wing. And then the midfield to the centre mids, we're going to go with Stevie Lomas, 1998, runner up to Rio. Um, again, solid. He had an engine on him, would run up and down, put a tackle in, had the odd goal, scored the odd goal, and even more so than I remember now looking back at those season reviews so put Stevie Lomas in and partnering him a guy who's kind of in conversation uh, quite often is Michael Carrick 2004 runner up to Matty Effrington and um, again Michael Carrick you know many have said that you know he, he's almost like he was overlooked um, in that sort of era compared to Joe and, and he probably was with, with, with Lamps and Joe and Maria, you know there was a nucleus of players and he did get overlooked I think but now looking back he had a fantastic pass on him, you know, and he was, he's, and I think it was, and apologies, one of the interviews, they mentioned his, his pass completion rate, and I'd love to have seen that, and to get an idea of how strong that was, because he very rarely gave the ball away. So that's on midfield four, Diamante, Lomas, Carrick, and Harewood. Up front, could have put uh, Antonio, uh, 2016 runner-up, could have put Ian Dowie, 1996 runner-up, um, but I'm going to go with uh, firstly Defoe, 2003 runner-up to Joe Cole. Um, now Jermaine, you know, great goal scorer for us at the club. Um, so he's in, and he's going to be partnered with a man who has a lovely, um, lovely song. You know, when the ball hits the goal, it's not Shearer or Cole, it's Bobby Zamora. Uh, he was runner-up in 2007 to a little Argentinian person called. Uh, Thomas Tevez, I don't know if you remember him. Um, again, a bit of a foregone conclusion that year, but the Z Man was great, wasn't he? Uh, scored a lot of goals for us. Um, remember, I think the season we went up uh, when he was playing, we he he was top goal scorer for for a fair amount of time, um, and had a knack. You know, he he was in the zone. You know, whether it's side pass him on come off his ass against Liverpool, I think, and you know, a rebound would hit him on the chest and go in. He was a great player for us, and again, a big West Ham fan. So that's that's my um, my bridesmaids eleven: uh, UC in goal, uh, McCartney, Tompkins, Billich, and Sinclair in uh, defence. Diamante, Lomas, Carrick, and Harewood, and then Defoe and Zamora up front. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, a little bit of fun. Um, as I said, if you want to get involved, give us a shout. I'd love to get you guys involved. And take care. Thanks for watching.